I think it's a narrative that's, that must be questioned now that email marketing is the best form of marketing, direct marketing. Um, I, I think the narrative that we are just carrying from the 90s okay. into the 2000s, and it's, it might not be as true as we say it is anymore. Hi, and welcome to the, uh, the last episode of the brand All BS. It's, I, I feel bad that it's coming to an end. Like every good thing, it must come to an end. And what better way to wrap up this entire episode than to bring the logo king himself. <laughs> so now this is the first time of him being on Brand Talks. So I'll allow him to anyone that doesn't know him, I'll allow him to uh, introduce himself and then we'll kick off from there. So I have Tola Alavi, the logo king with us for this episode. So let's meet you, Tola Alavi. Okay. Well, as I said, my name is Tola Alabi, and um, I'm a brand consultant. I run a business called um, TA Consulting um, here in Abuja, Nigeria, and I'm also a teacher and um, a mentor to a number of designers. So, um, talking about mentor, like he's actually I'm one of those <laughs> number of designers. <laughs> I'm one of those number of designers, and wow, it's you know <laughs> when you're with your, your guy, <laughs> you have to try and behave like you know. But it's really I really appreciate you uh, coming up on this, especially this last episode to wrap up the entire. Uh, Series. So we've been talking about brand OBS. We're basically trying to uh, let business owners better understand whether they are branding or they're just BSing, doing an, uh, the other thing. And in the, over the previous six episodes, we've tried to shape the entire uh, from what brand is to brand positioning, statements, and all. And today we'll be looking at integrated marketing communication, which I believe is is a very important aspect when it comes to building a brand. So I think uh, for first thing, let's talk about this. What is marketing? So it seems you're talking about integrated marketing communication. What is marketing and how does it differ or how is it similar to branding? Hmm. Yeah, that's a very popular question, Um, especially the second part of the question that compares marketing and branding. But let's even start by defining marketing. Um, Well, very simply put, and I hope this is simple enough, marketing is the activity or an activity that a company or its advocates engage in that um, would result in three of the following things, leads, engagement, and sales. So marketing is an activity that a company or business or an a company or business or its advocates. And when I say advocates, why, why I said that word advocates is because sometimes you are not the one marketing as a business. You just have people that really like your stuff and they are marketing for you. You understand those activities that they engage in that lead into that generate number one leads sales or engagement or lead engagement or sales in that order and um i'll I'll just i don't want to sound too technical so i'll just i'll just tell you what i mean by leads engagement or sales very quickly um and and, and let me use example you see when you're marketing and let's say you are a cake maker you're a baker um, or you have a cake shop um you can create a a post for Instagram, a flyer on Instagram that just has a photo of a cake and your logo. The photo of a cake, the photo of a very nicely made cake and your logo. Now, what a lead is when you're marketing, that's always the first step in marketing, leads. What a lead is, is that thing that sparks up curiosity in the mind of a potential client. So the person looks at the post and says, oh, this cake looks nice. I wonder who made it. 
you understand? Mm -hmm. And they look at it and they, and they look at your logo. I have not heard of this company before. Who is this person? That is a lead. That interest in a client is what is called a lead. Now, a lead normally leads to engagement. It connects to engagement. The next step of a lead is engagement. And when engagement means they've seen it, they like the cake. Now, the next thing they ask is, are they in Abuja? So they might contact you and say, are you in Abuja? Are you in Lagos? Um, um, how long have you been doing this? What kind of cake do you specialize in? So they start asking questions. That's engagement, when they start asking questions to know your brand better. But it always climaxes into sales. It should, effective marketing should climax into sales, whereby they now say, how much would it cost to do this? And they are ready to pay. So that's marketing. That activity that you might do as a business or someone who is an advocate who likes your, your work or likes your, your product will do for you that um, leads into what you call marketing leads, um, engagement and sales in the long run. Now, going to your second question, which is, how is it different from branding? Now, um, they, are, they are very closely related. I mean, they're like cousins. Um, but I, I wouldn't look at them as cousins. So I would say like father and child. Because marketing is, uh, um, branding is what I, I see branding as an opinion you have about something. And that thing can be a, a product, can be a place, can be a person, can be a service. An opinion anybody has about something, that is branding. And um, how does that differ from marketing? The truth is that I, I will compare them this way. Branding is what gives you the opportunity to market effectively. Branding gives the opportunity to market effectively. That means when you try to market without branding, it might not be effective. Um, so I'll put it this way. Uh, a company like Apple, you see, they market phones and laptops, but they brand the company. So when they are branding Apple, they are not branding Apple because they want you to come and buy the company. No. They brand the company so that they can effectively sell products. Do you understand? The same thing with Toyota. Toyota brands the company so that they can market cars. So when there is ineffective branding, there will be ineffective marketing. When there is no branding, marketing becomes very, very hard. And um, if, if I was to give a relatable um, example, it would be something like if my wife came into this room right now and just offered me, came with a, a, a cup of something purple in a, in a, in a, in a glass yeah. and said, oh, babe, try out this thing. It's very sweet. What will happen is I'll try it out. And if it is sweet, I'll say, mm, that's nice. What is it? If it is bad, I'll be like, oh, well, what the heck is this? You understand? But I would have tried it first because the branding I have of her is trust. She wouldn't give me something that would hurt me. Yeah. So she would just come in and just say, hey, try this, babe, and I'll try it. You understand what I'm saying? Now, if that same thing should happen, with some, if I'm walking on the street and some stranger should just come and say, hey, my guy, try this thing. Drink it. It's very sweet. The first thing I would ask is, what is it? I won't try. I'll say, no, I won't try. What, what, what are you trying to give me? You understand? The same situation. And the guy will say, oh, this thing is very sweet. You should try it. And I'll say, no, I'm not trying it. What is it? Explain to me why I should take this thing. That's when there's no effective branding because I don't know that guy. I don't trust him. So his marketing of that thing now becomes very weak and very hard for him to carry across. So branding is what makes gives you that opportunity to market effectively. So uh, with everything you've explained to us, like, I've, like I got something very clear and it's, it's consistent in all in the entire statement you just made. So obviously branding comes first before marketing. So you have to brand first before marketing. So there is no marketing without branding. Like why is it, why, why shouldn't I just market without branding? Or why is branding that important that it comes first before marketing? Yes, they should think that you're absolutely right. That's, that's exactly what I'm saying. On a good day, standard, following all rules of business, you should brand before marketing. It, it's, that's the way it should go. Although people are trying to, to you know, bypass branding now, they just go straight to marketing. And, yeah. and why is it important to brand before marketing? Because, the, because when you brand, branding 
breeds trust. It fosters trust. You understand? Mm -hmm. And where there is trust, it's easy for you to engage in purchase. Where there is no trust, you will scrutinize and scrutinize and scrutinize before you make a decision. You understand? So mm -hmm. it's hard. You cannot market where there's no trust. And branding allows you to build trust. The, the, the thing about it, why people try to bypass branding is because branding takes time. Trust is not built in a day. You understand? But, you, but the truth is, once you've built it, it's hard for, for people to come and, and, um, and block that trust. That trust always creates a way for you to market more effectively. Like right now, you've asked me to speak on this platform with yeah. you. You see, when you asked me, did I ask you, oh, what's this thing about? Oh, let me go and think about it. Um, let me think about it and pray about it. If I go, did I tell you anything like that? Mm -hmm. I told you, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm ready to do it. I'll do it with you. Because I trust you. You understand? I trust you. I said, oh, this IK, he does quality stuff. He's an intelligent guy. Of course, I'll jump on it with him. I've known him for a while. You understand? But if you're just some other guy, I'll, I'll tell him, tell me more about your platform. Tell me what we'll be discussing. Tell me why you're doing it. How did you find out about me? All those questions, you understand? We will lengthen the time before he can actually get what he wants, which is me showing up. But for you, because there's that trust, there's that relationship we have, all you had to do was, I want you to do this thing for me. And I said, yes, you understand? Because there was trust there. That's why branding has to be in place before marketing. No, I just needed you to clarify that because just like you said, these days we'll have people jumping the gun and then just going straight to marketing without trying to build that trust, without trying to build that relationship first. And I really love what you, the illustration you made with your wife because it's that trust you, you've been married for a couple of years. If you've known her before you got married, so over the years you've built that, that branding has been there, you've built that trust so that to ensure that, okay, she can hand over something and you take it without even bothering to ask. Now, exactly. let's just jump straight to now the, the topic, which is integrated marketing communication. Now, a lot of uh, businesses don't even understand what this means when we say integrated marketing communication. Like, I'd like you to explain to us what does it mean when uh, a marketer, a business owner, or a, a designer just says integrated marketing communication. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I, and I guess a lot of people would not understand because it sounds like a technical term, you understand, integrated marketing communication. I yeah. even have to remind myself what is integrated, what are the words, because sometimes I call it IMC, you understand, yeah. like, what is that C again? But, but the thing is that um, to break it down from the technical to the relatable, it is integrated marketing communication is when a company or a brand tries to make all it's communication, consistent. You understand? All yeah. your communication, consistent over all your platforms of communication. You understand? Yeah. So um, integration, I, I'll put it this way, it's, it's when, when everything, every area in which you are communicating as a business, you are communicating a consistent message. You are giving a consistent vibe. You understand? The same voice, the same personality is what they have on every single platform. You see, and um, it's very important in today's world because there are so many platforms to, to communicate on. You understand? Unlike in, even when I was growing up in the 80s, there were not so many platforms. It was radio, TV, newspaper. That's all. Radio, TV, newspaper. If you wanted to communicate and sell something, you have to go either on radio, put it in the newspaper, or on TV. But we know that things have really changed now, especially with the advent of the internet. Yeah. So there's radio, there's TV, there's print, and there is mobile. Do you understand? There's mobile now, and I'm going to put mobile as just um, uh, um, internet services. So it might be on your system, it might be on your, but there's mobile. And on that mobile now, there are now different platforms. There's Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, you know, all this, um, Twitter, there are so oh, many. Yeah. And you want to have a representation on each of these platforms. Now, integrated marketing communication is when you now make sure that what they are seeing, expressing, what you're expressing, what your audience is getting on this platform is consistent with what they're getting on that platform. 
the tone and the personality is the same. You understand? The voice is the same. It's the same, it's the same vibe. It's the same energy they are getting. That's what uh, um, integrated marketing communication is. Making sure that everything is in sync, no matter the platform on which your audience is communicating with you. And, you know, you you talk you talked on it a bit, but I want you to expand more on it. Like, why is this important? Like, why we? Because I feel it's important. That's why we're talking about it. That's why it's the is the last of this episode. Because I could have just rounded the episode by just talking, finishing about branding and all. But I figure that this is important. But I need to I need to help us better understand why this is important for businesses. Why is it important for this IMC? Why is it important? Yeah. Well, I guess for the sake of emphasis, it's, it's, it's important because the biggest problem we have in the world today is that there are too many voices. You understand? Yeah. Way too many voices. Everybody is speaking. Everybody. There are too many voices. Like, since you woke up this morning to this time, which is about 2.30 right now, if you were to take account of how many brands you have interacted with. You, within, the day has not even got to half of the day. You might have interacted, and that's given the fact that you are indoors. You have yeah. interacted with almost 200 brands, just within the space of being in your house and looking at your phone. 200, 200 brands. Now, if you now went out, if you went out to a party between your house and that party, you would communicate with an additional about 500 brands. Either on a car, on a billboard, on a sticker, on a bike, on somebody's T-shirt, it is always, they are bombarded with it. So there are so many voices. And the truth is that it now gets very hard as a consumer to trust. When you're in a place where there are too many people, you don't trust. You, there's, a, there's a feeling of insecurity you have. Just like IK now, if I put you, I, I, I'll give you an experience. The first time when I was young, I went to a place in Lagos to watch a concert. First ever time in my life, I went to, went to, we went to watch a concert with my uncle. And he took us to a place called TBS in Lagos. It's called Tafa Balewa Square in Lagos. And I had never been there before. But that day we went there. And there were people everywhere. We went to see a South African artist then who was very popular then, Yvonne Chaka Chaka. And we went to watch her for the first time came to Nigeria. And the place was packed, as in shoulder to shoulder, nose to nose, everything was so... I've never been in that environment. Immediately we got in there, the first thing that got to me was fear of I could get lost here. Do you understand? So we had to hold each other. I held my sister and my... Uh, my I held both my sister and my other sister held my uncle, and we held each other. Because if there was a detach from the person you were familiar with, you were lost. That's the same way consumers feel in today's world where there are so many people. They feel almost lost. You feel like you're in a place where you have to be guarded. In that place, when, I, when you're in a crowded place, and I'll ask you this, Ike, when you're in a crowded place, very crowded place where you don't know anybody, how do you feel when you see somebody whose voice you know? How does I, it feel for you? Like, I, I feel like, uh, it, it, like just like you said, in that kind of place, I feel lost. And when I hear someone I know, I immediately want to locate the person because I want to identify with that person, hold that person, be with exactly. that person, be in the company of that person. Exactly. Like that person. Exactly. Now, because you've seen someone whose voice you're familiar with in that crowded environment, you feel an immediate bond. In fact, you want to hold on to that person because, oh, I know this voice. This person is familiar. I'm safe with this person. The same thing with brands right now. People want to be familiar. They want something they can dedicate themselves to because there are too many, too many choices to make. Even if you just want to make a choice of bottled water to buy, there are too many choices, too many voices. So you want the most consistent one, the one that you know that, like that, that, that you know you have an emotional attachment with that speaks your language and that consistently speaks your language. You understand? That yeah. you feel safe with. And that consistency must be on every platform because the truth is there are over how many million people on Facebook, over how many million people on Instagram. So you want, you want something that is familiar. You want something that you can trust from place to place. So it, 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 it's especially important because there are so many voices. And people want 
the customer today wants a clear voice. They want something that they can identify with and trust so that they can navigate their way through this business market. So that's why it's very important for you to make your voice clear as a business on every single platform where it's consistent, where people can know, oh, if I log on to this, I'm getting the same value. If I log on to this, I'm getting the value. When I see them in the newspaper, it's the same value. So they feel like they know you and you, you are now a familiar voice in a crowded market. You know, I, the illustration you just made, I love the illustration because because it talks about, now it puts our consumers or our customers in some sort of community, right? Now, uh, everybody have their own community. There's a Twitter community, there's a Facebook community, there's a print community, there's the email marketing community. Every, your customers are all in different communities. And if there's one marketing, if there's one marketing strategy, I know that video works and uh, I advise businesses to do that. It's what we call some sort of personalized marketing because you are identifying your customers where they are in their different segments, in their different communities. And you're still being consistent in who you are as a, as a brand, with your values, with your mission, mm. personalizing the experience for them in that community. Mm. That is mm. another mm. importance of IMC or integrated marketing communication because it makes personalized marketing, it makes it more, uh, more effective or more efficient, if I, if I will say in my own opinion. I don't know if you feel the yeah. same. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Definitely. You, you know, and that's the thing here. You, you realize that today's, today's consumers, today's audience, they are ignorant of any other person being your customer. They want to be treated like they are the only customer you have. You understand? That's how they want to be treated. They, 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 unlike before, and, and, that's, and that's because marketing has become so personal. If I want to communicate with somebody that sells a product now it is me on my phone talking with the company so it's i don't see any other person communicating unlike in the 80s when you have to go to the office and you see other customers there you understand i'll give this example now if i wanted to order pizza right now i could just call a pizza brand i'll just call them and have them deliver pizza to my house. You see, you see what will happen here? Immediately I call them, immediately I call them, and I finish that order. I start waiting. I become impatient. It's now them against the clock. Because then it now becomes, when are they going to bring my pizza? You understand? Because I just sat down in my house and I called them, and they're meant to come with my pizza. I'm not thinking of the other person that has called them two minutes before I called them. Or the other person that called them one hour before I called them. It's just that I called them. Why, why do you waste time now? Because I felt like if is that my pizza that they came to work to make that day? You understand what I'm saying? Unlike in the in, in the past, before there was any picking up a mobile phone to call for home delivery, you had to go to the pizza shop. And when you went to the pizza shop, you will see the guy in front of you and the guy in front of him and the guy in front of him. And you're aware that you're not the only customer. So you'll be patient. To the guest to your turn. You understand? But now you're not seeing them anymore. You're there, you're, you're, it's just personalized marketing. It's you and them. So when they bring it to your house, you feel like they bought the pizza to your house. They, you, you didn't have to wait in line. So it now puts more pressure on the businesses to make sure that that personalized experience is a good one. You understand? Because once it becomes, because customers don't want to hear excuses anymore. They don't want to hear, oh, sorry, I had to deliver to five other places before I came. They don't care because they didn't see those five people. Unlike if they were seeing those five people, they'd be like, okay, I saw five people here, so I know I have to wait. But the person that is calling you doesn't care about five people. He doesn't see five people. All it knows is that I'm in my house, I'm sitting, and I'm waiting for the brand to deliver my product to me. So you, you are very right about personalized marketing being like, it, it, it could be what makes or breaks a business in today's world. You know, talking about this, the delivery and all, and it's one of the things, uh, in one of the episodes, we talked about these two categories, the millennials and the baby boomers. And we know that, especially with the millennials, they're quite impatient. And you, you go online, you see there's a lot of uh, people bashing uh, brands like for their poor uh -huh. services. And you see banks uh -huh. over that a lot, especially in Nigeria, uh -huh. banks over that a lot. Now, now talking about that, it, it takes on to tools, uh, some uh, different tools 
uh, IMC tools or integrated marketing tools. But I want us to focus on because we have advertising. There are so many. Yeah. There are so many. But I want us to focus on social media marketing and then also direct yeah. marketing. But let's start with social media marketing because social media marketing is very, very important, especially in this area and going to the next it will definitely innovate and all, but we cannot see, we can't overemphasize how important social media marketing is. We just talked about banks being bashed online and all, and they're taking, uh, I know both, especially in a place like Lagos, is taking a major hit online as well for poor services, oh. for drivers, oh. and passengers and all. So how important is social media marketing? And what your, in your own opinion, how important is social media marketing? Well, social media marketing in today's world is absolutely, absolutely important. In fact, it's, it's more important than direct marketing itself. It's absolutely important because social media has become people's lives. You understand? That's their lives. People spend more of their actual waking hours on social media. You understand? Well, before they sleep at night, social media. When they wake up in the morning, social media. When they are at the table eating, social media. When they are at work, meant to be working, social media. Social media has taken over people's lives. So as a business, if you are not exploring social media, then you, it's, it's almost like committing suicide as a company because you won't survive. So it becomes especially hard. And, and, and the truth of the matter is that it has become so hard to market right now. Running a business and branding is hard now. And I'll tell you why it's hard, because of social media. Um, I'll use myself as an example. You see, because in today's world, people do not separate the person from the brand anymore. They're one now, unlike before. People buy from the brand. They don't care who the CEO is. Who is I don't care who the CEO is, just the product and the company. But now, when people hear of a brand, they want to know who is behind the brand. You understand? Yeah. So you can't separate the company from the brand. And you can't separate the brand from the person. Just like um, there's a story that, is good, that went on from, uh, is going, uh, went on around this week about a girl that killed a man um, in a, you know, and then it, it now became, oh, this is the 21-year-old girl that murdered the MD of so 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 and so company. Hmm. It was no longer about his name. His name now, his company and the name are now the same thing. So every single blog, every single web article you read, you see, this is the person that murdered this person who is the MD of this company. You understand? Yeah. So the company is taking a hit too. You understand? So now it now becomes hard to do social media as an individual if you're running a company. Because I meet a lot of people that tell me, um, okay, as a company, can I put up my personal stuff on my social media page. And I say, no, you can, but you need to be careful. If what you're saying as a person doesn't align with what you say as a brand, people will not understand. They'll be unforgiving, very unforgiving. You see, that's why if you look at, if you see me, I say I use myself as an example, you, WhatsApp is social media and people don't realize that. They think it's just personal diary. It's just a form of contact. But social media, they don't understand it. And you, if, you, if, if I use myself as an example, I don't, you, you see, on WhatsApp, you hardly see me put up, oh, my wife's birthday, my mother's birthday, my own birthday. Sometimes I put it up, but very few times. Because I realized that what I'm saying as a company, people have attacked it to my personal life. So there must be some consistency. So I can't tell people, you know what? On my social, on, on my WhatsApp, that's my personal life. I show myself partying, doing all manner of things. But my business life, I'm a corporate, serious guy. They won't believe it. Do you understand? So I need to be consistent. So when people follow you, I, I've had people tell me, oh, sir, can you add me on WhatsApp, save my number, so that I can be seeing your status? Now, why do, why do you think they want to be seeing my status? Is it because they want to see my family? No, because they want to see stuff on design. So they don't mm. think, oh, WhatsApp, is a place where Mr. Tola doesn't put design. No. If I, if I have someone's number who might be a motivational speaker, like maybe say Fela Duruto, you know, he's a motivational speaker, yeah. and I get his phone number, and I see him on the status, my expectation is that his status should be telling me something that motivates me every day. 
But if Bella Dote is not motivating me on his status and what he's putting up is Manchester United, I become disappointed. I'm like, why, 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 why do I have this guy's number? If I can have, why do I have him on WhatsApp? If, I, if, I, if, I, if he cannot be consistent to put motivational speaking on everything. So he now becomes always a motivational speaker in the public eye, on social media, any social media, he has to be that person because that's what is expected. And that's why social media has become so hard. It's hard. It's hard because you cannot take a break from your personal life on social media. If you're a business person, you cannot because they judge you based on what you do. You understand? So if, if, if you're a pastor of a church, there was a time there was a pastor um, of, a, of a popular church, the wife put something on her social media page and people started judging her. Ah, why should she go to the beach wearing this kind of thing? This shirt she's wearing is too short. But she was not in church. You understand? She was at the beach. But people still said, this is the pastor's wife. She should not be wearing this even at the beach. So there's no break. They, they expect the branding to be consistent. You understand? Yeah. The branding must be consistent across all platforms. So you can't take a break. The only place you can take a break is when that your phone is off and you're at home. You understand? But as long as you're a representative, there's no, this is my personal brand and it goes against my, my business brand. There was a guy who I, I saw yesterday, just yesterday, and um, how I saw it was someone sent a prank video. And it was, it was, not, it was not really a funny prank. It was just a prank. You understand? Um, I, didn't, I didn't get it, but it was interesting to an extent. So I, I, I saw his Instagram handle on the video. So I checked his, his Instagram handle. And I saw that on his Instagram handle, he has put his, he had now had a business page where he was selling cars, selling really good, beautiful cars, to be honest. And he was doing quite a good job selling the cars. But you know what? I still didn't trust him anymore. Because I was like, this guy, I can't buy a car from this guy. This same guy that pranks people now. You understand? He had a prank page and a car sales page. Two different things. A prank is telling me you are totally unserious. A car page is telling me you can trust me with so much money to buy this car. If I see you doing pranks, I cannot buy cars from you. I would not trust you. It's very hard. You understand? So that was conflicting. But he felt he has a right to do pranks. And he also has a right to do cars. But the world is telling you you don't have a right to do that anymore. You have to be consistent in your branding. That's why social media is so important today. But also it makes it so hard for you to take a break from branding. You're always branding with social media. Yeah, I, yeah, I like the last thing you say. You're always branding because people uh, might end up thinking that okay, maybe I'll, I'll just brand for five years and then like branding is something that is ongoing. It's until the business ongoing. die or till you die as a person, you are always branding. Now, yeah. uh, let's see from social media. I, I like to talk about this order because there are two: uh, social media marketing and direct marketing and. Talking about direct marketing, uh, marketing, I like to focus on email marketing as part of the direct marketing. Because uh, aside uh, social media marketing, email marketing has proven to be very, very effective. It has proven to be yeah. one of the best marketing uh, strategies or marketing tools for business. Yeah. But I think that mo uh, some businesses are yet to understand or yet to grasp, okay, how how is email marketing, especially when it comes to personalization. You know, I feel good when I see an email that has my name on it. Because I'm like, oh, okay, you guys know me. And I'm like, I want to open it and just something generalized. So how important is uh, email marketing when it comes mm. to IMC? That's a, that's, a very, that's a very good question. And I think I've had this conversation with people before in the past. And I think it's, my own personal opinion, I think it's a narrative that's, that must be questioned now that email marketing is the best form of marketing, direct marketing. Um, I, I think it's a narrative that we are just carrying from the 90s okay. into the 2000s. And it's, it might not be as true as we say it is anymore. Um, remember, in the 90s, in the late 90s, early 2000s, People were very attached to their emails. People were very attached to their emails because that was all they had. People are not as attached to their emails as we think they are anymore. So I'm really not a big advocate of email marketing. As effective as people say it is, 
I don't think it's that effective anymore. It, when it started out, it was 90, 95% effective. I think now it's bordering between, I, I can't even say in the 50s anymore. I think it's like entering the 40s. I'm, I, 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 and it's something I've tried out and I've seen. Um, do, uh, recently, I sent out a, 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 an email to my clients, telling them of some changes I'd made to my company. And um, you know, just intimating them. And I sent it to my client. It, it took a long time to, to, to gather and to collate all the emails of clients I've worked with over the past 17 years. But I, I was able to do that with the help of my partner. And we did that. And we sent it out to all our clients. And you know, some weeks after, I had meetings with some of these clients that I sent them to. And I told them, okay, uh, sorry, did you get um, our email? And they said, what email? I said, ah, sir, I sent you an email two weeks ago. Well, I didn't get your email. And right there in front of me, they brought out their tablet or their phone and they're like, okay, let me check it. I said, ah, oh, this one. Okay, I, I didn't even know. I've not checked this thing in a while. Do you understand? Oh, yeah. A lot of them had not even opened the email. And I'll tell you why email marketing might not be as effective as we're saying it is. Number one, people are not as attached to their emails. And, they, and they, there's a reason why people are not as attached to their emails anymore. Because emails have been infiltrated by scammers. Um, Do you understand? Scammers have spoiled the marketing tool called email. It's unfortunate, but that's the truth. You understand? Yeah. So like like yesterday, I was on my uh, I, I was at home and I just saw an email, an email came in on my phone. You see, I'm not as quick to check an email as I am to check my WhatsApp message or a prompting for an Instagram message. I saw I prompted him on that on an email and I saw it, it was like um your credit for seven million naira. I just saw it, I, I, that was the title of the message, seven million naira credit has, has been received. Do you think I opened that email? I didn't, I didn't open it because it, there are so many of them. The one that I've received, look, on my email, I'm a multi-billionaire. Um, um, if you check my email, but like, I have seven million naira on my email. I have two million dollars on my email that, that I'm not going to go and check. You understand? But that's not what email, that's what email has become. Email has become infiltrated with scammers. You understand? So they, and they are going with that mentality also that direct marketing through email is the most effective. But people don't trust it that much anymore. They don't trust it that much anymore. So a lot of times when people see an email and they are not expecting it, the only way where emails really, really work, where emails really, really work, I'll tell you the scenarios where emails really work. If you applied for a job and they tell you they'll get back to you by email, every email to you is important. You'll be checking your email for people that are looking for jobs. If you are meeting with somebody and maybe you know you're a designer, you send someone a design by email, and I want to get a reply from the person, email will become important to you. If you are expecting like a, a job contract, you understand that kind of thing, and the person says, okay, I'll send you an email. If if an email is expected, it becomes a very important tool. But unexpected, whereby someone just sitting down and just feel the person is going to go through their emails, people don't check their emails as much anymore. They are too busy on Instagram, WhatsApp, Twitter. That's where they get most of their information from. Because email has been bastardized. I, 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 as in, it's amazing to me right now. If, if I open my email right now, I would have about 60. From this morning till now, 60 emails. About 80% of them are useless emails. 80, I won't, I won't lie to you. 80% yeah. of them are useless emails. Some of them are telling you, if you need a lawyer, you can call on me. Some of them are telling you, if you need some particular body enlargement, call on me. Some of them are telling you, if you want to, that there are so many of them. So you know what? I just push it away. Until that client calls me and says, oh, I just sent you an email, check it. I say, okay, no problem, I'll check it right now, sir. But I'm not there every time, standing by. So email marketing might really have failed. And this is something I've tried, tested out. And, and to be honest, I realize it has failed. There are people that have sent me emails to They'll tell me, oh, Tola, I just sent you an email um, two weeks ago. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know. Let me go and check. And I go and check before I now find that email. So email marketing, I think we need to question that. Is it really effective? For me, I feel it's getting rather ineffective because it has been infiltrated a lot. Uh, so uh, in your own opinion, like, 
what should what should a business focus more on the social media marketing as against focusing on email marketing? Yes, um, I, I feel a company should focus more on social media marketing. To be honest with you, as if I go to compare it to whether social media or email, I will say fo- focus more on social media. Yeah. Um, focus more on social media. People spend a lot of time. The only thing that you, what you now need to ask yourself is which social media expresses my services or showcases my products the best. You understand? That's where you now need to spend. So if your products are more of thought, thought pro- products, you are a consultant, you are a thought leader, you are a coach, you teach people, you understand that kind of thing. Yeah. People want to know the quality of your thoughts. Then you might think of Twitter. Do you understand? Because it allows you to write your thoughts. You understand? It's more, it's more cerebral. But if you are selling shoes, selling cars, selling logos, those kind of things, think of something that allows you to be able to put up images as much as possible. So you think of social media that works for you. I wouldn't say um, email marketing. I think the way you use email is when you've already built an interaction with the client. Mm-hmm. And you're like saying, okay, uh, all right, you want to, we'll contact you, we'll send you our rates by email. Email works for that. That way they're expecting an email. Or, you tell, or, or when they see something that they like on your social media page, maybe Instagram or WhatsApp, and they're like, oh, I like what I just saw. Can I see more? Then you can say, oh, we'll send you our digital bro- brochure by email. Then they're expecting to see it. Then after which you cannot contact them, we'll just send you an email. You understand? But just sending to them by email and just hoping that I'm not just hoping, they're yeah, assured that they've seen it. I'll guarantee you that a lot of people have not seen it. You understand what I'm saying? So I, I would say any smart company should focus more on social media. Find out which social media best allows you to express your services or showcase your products or express your thoughts and use that one, use that one consistently to get to your audience. You know, I, I, I agree, especially when dealing with the millennials. And of course, if, even we're talking about the baby boomers, you find them on Facebook. Everybody's on social media, right? Everybody, yeah. yeah. Everybody's on social media. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for this. Like, it's been quite insightful. And like, there's a lot to unpack. Now, to summarize this, like, I'll just ask, uh, what is your final take or what is your final word to someone out there, to a business owner out there looking at, looking at this uh, in session right now and wondering, okay, uh, what in terms of IMC integrated marketing, maybe someone starting up and trying to, what is your final word for this business owner? Okay. Uh, my final word for the business owner that wants to do integrated marketing communication, which we've said is being consistent over the platform that you're on, is don't start too broad. You understand? Especially if you are a small business. If you're a big business, you can have Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, because you have a brand manager and you have the staff to manage all these things, social media managers. We are just a one-man business starting up. Start small because it can get overwhelming trying to maintain your consistent voice on, on WhatsApp, LinkedIn, Instagram. You, 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 you will just hit your life because you won't have time for anything again. So I, I'm, I'm saying find out my last word, what I just said in the last point. Find out which works for you best. Choose what I would say your top three. And if three is too much, choose your top two. Let people know if you want to find this person, go to WhatsApp, get their content. Or um, if you want to find this person, go to YouTube. Their content is there. Or if you want to find this person, go to Instagram. Instagram and Twitter, that's where they are strongest. But you know, as an individual, you can't, there are too many of them. You can't stretch yourself thin. You would you never have any time to work again. You, every time you just be having to be uploading and updating stuff. So choose the ones that work best for you as much as possible. Um, but but even above IMC, I would advise business owners to to start with branding. Start with branding. Start with branding. There's nothing more important than that. If you don't brand, 
you cannot market effectively. I know there's an urge to market because you feel market brings in the money. But if you brand first, think about what your mission is, what your vision is, who your audience are, um, what your values are, what your positioning would be, what your brand personality is. When you can figure out all these things, then when you start to market, you know the kind of voice to use. You see, marketing is so hard when there's no branding. You, that's when you start thinking, eh, should we use yellow or use blue? Or should we use red? Should we use this font or use this font? But when you know your personality, you say, oh, we want to, we, we want to communicate calmness and serenity and peacefulness and care. Then you're not going to be thinking of using red. Do you understand? Or yellow for calmness. No. When you know that your brand is a calm, serene, caring brand, you know you're going to be using softer pastel colors. Do you understand? You know the kind of font you're using. You know the kind of language you'll be using. You know, if you're, if you're a caring brand, you, you won't start by saying, hey, people, how are you doing? No, no, you, you won't be loud. Do you understand? You'll be more, you'll be, you, you, you'll be, you'll be your, your copywriting will be more of asking questions. Oh, do you feel down? Do you feel this? Something that sounds more caring, you understand? So, and that can only come by knowing what your brand personality is. When you know your brand personality, you're able to market better. And that makes um, um, your marketing communication over your platforms easy to sustain without you thinking, how should we sound today? What should we say today? What color should we use? What image should we use? You, that shows that you haven't done your branding well. So I advise people to start with branding before going into anything at all, start with branding. So you've heard that now branding makes marketing easy and you've heard that on the brand will be is. So it's a wrap from us here and uh, to a business owner out there watching this live. We would love to hear your brand building experience because this whole series has been all about building a brand. Share your experience with us and if you need any further information, contact us and we'd like to help you in building your brand. Thank you to all of you for being on this show and um, still for having me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I'm still your host, I feel GB and till next time, peace out.